Want to find out exactly how powerful rebranding is? Then you'll be interested in this story of Play-Doh. Creating one of the most popular toys in the world was actually an accident that turned out to be worth millions of dollars. As crazy as it might sound, the sticky substance was actually a wallpaper cleaner. So how did it end up being converted into a modeling compound for arts and crafts projects by kids worldwide? We're about to tell you all about this fascinating story. So stick around as we take you all the way back to the 1920s. World War II and a Failing Company The story of Plato starts with a failing soap company in Cincinnati known as Coutol. Sure, people needed soap for their homes and things were looking good for this company, with sales figures rising steadily. Unfortunately, this changed in the late 1920s when sales failed drastically, and the owners had no choice but to think about closing down Coutol. They left this sad task to 21-year-old Cleo McVicker. His task was simple, sell off the company's leftover assets of powdered hand soap, and that will be goodbye for the company forever. Although this was a bit tough, Cleo handled it quite nicely and even managed to make enough profit for the company to stay afloat just a little bit longer. So it looked like it wasn't time for Cotol to fade out of existence just yet. Cleo contacted his brother Noah and together they thought of a way to bring Cotol back to life again. A great opportunity for this didn't come until 1933 when Cleo secured a meeting with representatives from the Kroger grocery chain. This grocery store wanted a company that could make wallpaper cleaners, and even though they had never made one before that meeting, Cleo claimed they could. Why wallpaper cleaners, though? Well, most people that wanted to heat their homes during terribly cold winters relied on coal as a heating source. Not only was it very efficient in warming up their homes, but it was also way cheaper than wood, so it wasn't surprising that coal was extremely popular during these times. Unfortunately, it came with a nasty side effect. Using coal led to a layer of soot taking over every space in their homes, and it was super difficult to clean out of wallpaper. This was way before the existence of vinyl wallpaper, so people were stuck with soot messing up their homes. It was close to impossible to get wallpapers as clean as they wanted since they couldn't get them wet, but that was when Catull came to the rescue. Cleo took the order for 15,000 cases of wallpaper cleaner, and there was even more pressure because he would have to pay a penalty of $5,000 if the company didn't deliver on time. To give you a good idea of how much that is, it's equivalent to almost $100,000 today. They definitely didn't have this huge amount of money at that time. Cleo turned to his product developer brother, Noah, to come up with a breakthrough product. Thankfully, Noah actually did. He took a common formula available then and made a version that would help them stand in the market. And so, Catal was saved with a clever mixture of flour, salt, and water. This malleable clay-like compound was a massive success and drove Catol to the top of the industry for about two decades. This amazing company became the go-to source for wallpaper cleaners and was popular in almost every part of the country. It was the early 20th century and Catol was the largest manufacturer of wallpaper cleaners in the world. Then it was the 1940s. Just after America won the Second World War. Before the war, Catol had huge popularity as a wallpaper cleaner seller. But after the war, sales began to take a nosedive. Most people didn't use a coal to heat their homes after the war. They have found better alternatives, and with that, almost everyone switched to oil and gas furnaces. The good news about those types of heating sources was that they didn't come with soot issues. But that wasn't such great news for Catol. A heater that didn't produce soot meant that where wallpapers were cleaner. And that meant that people didn't need wallpaper cleaners as much as before. To make matters worse, a little genius created vinyl wallpaper. When people discovered that all they needed was soap and water to clean this type of wallpaper, they didn't need any convincing to switch to it. And with that, the reign of wallpaper was slowly coming to a sure and painful end. While the company was still working on changing this bleak situation, Cleo died in a plane crash in 1949. Therefore, Catol walked into the 1950s with no hope that it could get back to its glory days. After the unfortunate death of Cleo, the mantle of turning Catol's situation around fell on Joseph McVicker. But the person who would eventually take Catol out of its financial woes was a nursery school teacher known as Kay Zufall. Kay was also Joseph's sister-in-law. Christmas was around the corner, and she was searching for a fun but cheap way to make Christmas decorations. Eventually, she stumbled on a tip in a magazine that said that wallpaper cleaner could actually be used to make cheap Christmas ornaments. Surprised but willing to try it out, Kay brought a bunch of wallpaper cleaners from Catol and decided to try this non-toxic material at school. You can only imagine the look of delight on Kay's face when she realized that the wallpaper cleaner worked as a modeling project. 
and the kids had so much fun with it for hours without getting bored. And with that, Kay discovered a fun new toy and rushed off to share this news with Joseph. So how did they change a wallpaper cleaner to a children's plaything? This transformation was possible by removing the detergent, pouring in some nice almond scent, and the new name was Katol's Rainbow Modeling Compound. Also, they changed it from its initial simple white color with a lot of injected color dyes. But as you can imagine, no one was ready to call it that long and boring name. Once again, Kay came to the rescue with a much better name. While discussing this idea with her husband, Kay had a major inspiration to call this toy Play-Doh. Wouldn't you fall in love with that name instantly? Well, Joe did. And this was the beginning of a new era for the former wallpaper cleaner manufacturer. Gatal began to sell this toy to different schools around Cincinnati and grew in success locally. Play-Doh was available in blue, yellow, and red by 1957, and this got many people interested in the product. But that wasn't enough. Joe wanted to make Play-Doh as popular as possible, but he didn't have the money to carry out any huge advertising project. It looked like Play-Doh would have really slow growth. But that changed when Joe was able to contact Bob Keeshan. You may know Bob better as Captain Kangaroo, the owner of a children's show that aired on television to millions of viewers, mostly kids. Although he still didn't have money, Joe came up with a better deal. He told Bob that he could have 2% of every successful sale if he would only use Play-Doh at least once a week on the Captain Kangaroo show. With that, Play-Doh became a national hit as orders went through the roof from various parts of the country. It became so popular that other children's shows began to use this interesting toy as well. Here's one of the craziest parts. When Katol was still in the business of creating wallpaper cleaners, they sold at only 34 cents per can. But the same can, now known as Play-Doh, sold for $1.50. Imagine selling practically the same thing at different prices, with the only difference being the color and no detergent. But that's just how it worked. By 1964, Play-Doh recorded at least a million cans sold per year, and this figure continued to rise. A year later, General Mills bought the company, and then it was handed over to Hasbro in 1991. The Play-Doh era is anything but over. So far, more than 2 billion cans of this plaything have been sold to people in different countries around the world. It was not a national hit, but a global one, and obviously Katol wasn't a broke company anymore. Play-Doh continues to stay relevant as the company keeps introducing several accessories that make children scream more. The icing on the cake was Play-Doh making it into the National Toy Hall of Fame in 1998. Yes, it was and still is that good. Now you know the story of how a wallpaper cleaner became one of the most iconic toys ever. And that's a wrap. Are you a big fan of Play-Doh? Let us know in the comments. Did you like this video? Well, we're always posting amazing content like this, so don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out. Thanks for watching.